Hello and welcome to part two of building a fledgling classical music collection. Um, so we've finished with uh, Chopin and my recommendation of uh, uh, the Polonaises by uh, Maurizio Pollini. And uh, let's move on to our next composer and piece and recording. And it is Schumann. Schumann, ignore the green for a minute, <laughs> Schumann, <laughs> and his famous, wonderful piano concerto, of course, very different from, from uh, in style and, and, and almost every way from, from his contemporaries and their concertos, um, Chopin, Liszt, course after Beethoven there we go that's a, a very very another well-known well-respected recording which uh, your collection would do very well with as a start um, we've got of course the great Christian Zimmerman and the great Herbert von Karajan I think this is from the 70s another Deutsche gramophone pick uh, let's see is that the 70s um, where are we? Oh, sorry. 1982. <laughs> 1982. I like all of these. This is, this is on Spotify. If you don't want to collect the physical CDs, you can uh, certainly add it to your playlist on Spotify. If you want to pull a classical music collection, we'll start one. There we are. Schumann Clavier Concerto. Clavier Concert, I mean. And now let's move on to, let's move on to, do, 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 list, list as we just uh, talked about there, his two concertos again, uh, Christian Zimmerman, Christian Zimmerman, tripping over my Zimmermans there, uh, there we go, and we've got um, Sage Ozawa, and the... Boston Symphony Orchestra. There we are. Again, looks like from possibly from the eighties. Let's have a look. Eighty-eight. Yes, so a bit later on in the decade. Eighty-eight. So recommend this highly. Again, Deutsche Grammophon. There's so many of them. Are the previous one, the Schumann was um, Zimmerman and von Karajan with the Berlin Philharmonic, as you might expect. <laughs> And let's move on to um, Liszt's uh, son-in-law now. Good old Richard. Richard W. The big W. There we go, Wagner. Now, The Ring. This is another one I've had like Beethoven. I've had trouble picking just <laughs> one, one recording version of this, especially for The Ring. So... Uh, I've picked two recordings, highlights, I should sorry, actually, I say highlights of the four operas in the ring. So this is um, Von Karajan's ring from uh, the oh, when was this? Uh, late 60s into the early 70s, um, I think 67 to 70 basically. Um, and of course you've got Ryan Gold, De Valkyrie, Siegfried and uh, the Twilight of the Gods get got to Denmark. There we are. And it's highlights from each basically. Rather well, than having to buy remember this is your fledgling collection, your beginner collection, so rather well, than having to buy each and every opera <laughs> at the moment in your collection. Uh, here are some wonderful highlights from uh the Von Carrion Ring. Of course with uh, the Berlin Phil, I think. Just double check that. Pretty sure. Yeah. Building fill. There we go. Again, this is on gramophone, but I'm sure you can probably find it on other labels. Uh, and as I said, here is the other possibly better known, possibly even better loved version of um, the ring. Um, Wagner's ring. Uh, which is precedes actually proceeds that uh, the Cat on carry on ring cycle. This is the um, Schulte um, 
Vienna Philharmonic, uh, late 50s to mid 60s, so a decade before really, if not a little bit earlier, um, uh, Ring Cycle, Von Carrier, sorry, Schulte, <laughs> and the Vienna Philharmonic, uh, famous, uh, famously produced by John Coleshaw, um, Decker, and uh, where are we, sorry, my memory, my memory is terrible, absolutely awful. Yeah, there we are. So um, this one is a bit different because obviously, you know, you've got uh, some really great, you've got Birgit Nilsson as Brunhilde, Wolfgang Vingassen as Siegfried, one of my favourite Siegfrieds, one of my favourite um, heroic tenors uh, in Wagner, Hans Otter as Wotan, you know, I'm, I'm sure. Um, uh, Fischer Discount is in this as well, actually, in Gotterdammer, I'm sure he is. Um, so there's a very good documentary about the making of Gotterdammer in this called The Golden Ring from the BBC at the time, which you can buy. You used to be able to buy them on, on uh, DVD. I think it's even on YouTube for free, actually, or snippets of it. Um, very interesting, very interesting recordings of the ring because this, unlike the Von Carrion, cycle actually has uh, sound effects um, placed at certain points post-production so in Gotterdammer when uh, the walls of Valhalla f fall they have the sound effects sound effects of <laughs> um, the walls coming down in the uh, after the well, after the immolation scene after Brunhilde sings her final notes and uh, yeah You'll see in the documentary, John Coulshaw actually pushes Schulte to to uh, do things like use faster tempos than he or would like to, uh, particularly in the funeral march. We've got to Demro. Um, but fantastic, that was really dynamic. Of course, that's only hired Schulte because it was extremely dynamic um, uh, interpretation, conducting, and the VPO sound amazing, absolutely amazing, particularly the brass. Absolutely amazing. The strings, sweet as you like. Fantastic. Great singers. Great, great. This is a must, must, must have for your collection. And to round off our Wagner, again, so you don't have to collect all of the, again, operas in your sort of uh, beginner collection. One of my favourite uh, compilations, really, of Wagner overtures and preludes to most of the operas. Again, this is Schulte, and this is with Schulte with the Chicago Symphony uh, Orchestra and the Vienna Philharmonic. And it's basically, um, let's see what we've got. We've got uh, The Ride of the Valkyries, we've got um, the Prelude to Lohengrin, uh, the Overture to Rheinsee, the Overture to the Fl uh, Flying Dutchman, to Fliegende Hollander, um, we've got the Prelude to Tristan and Isolde, uh, the Overture to Tannhäuser, one of my favourites. And the prelude to Die Meister Singer, probably my favourite, to be honest. <laughs> All fantastic recordings, really good. On Decker there. Um, again, I'm sure this is on Spotify. Um, I'm not even sure if this is available now uh, on CD. Not, not, I, I, can't rec I can't sort of say go and get it on CD, so I'm not sure you can get it on CD. But um, um, a lot of these I've actually bought and used... Um, for stupidly low amounts of money, um, because for some reason people don't want to <laughs> want to listen to them, which I find always find bizarre. But some, there we are. Um, so we move on now. We move on to um, to the uh, there we are Verdi, the great Verdi himself, of course, Wagner's contemporary, uh, great opera composer. There we are, and I'm going to go with another Naxos sort of historic recording, and this is, uh, of course, Rigoletto, Verdi's, hmm, maybe Verdi's most popular uh, opera, along with Traviata. Traviata, I think Traviata is the most performed of Verdi's operas um, throughout the world, uh, as far as I know. But Rigoletto, of course, extremely always popular um, a must for your collection really uh, like the rest that I've shown you and of course we have the great UC Bjorling there this is quite an early recording this is um, I 
1945. Live, I think this is a live recording from 45. Of course. <laughs> this, you know, you can get many great <laughs> recordings of this as well. You don't have to get this one. But I re recommend this one. I really like this, actually. Because I didn't want to go for a, for a sort of all shining, lovely sheen um, studio recording of Rigoletto. I wanted the live um, version with a great singer, and he is a great, great singer. One of the greats, of course. Um, again, left us too young, unfortunately. Um, just like Glenn Gould, who we've already talked about. So there we are. You see Bjorling. What else have we got on here? Did 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 did. But anyway, well, I'm going to that because we'll be all day. And that's with um, uh, the Metropolitan Opera Chorus and Orchestra and Caesar Sodero. There we are, from 19, 29th of December 1945. The Immortal Performance um, series on Naxos. Not much money. Not much money. Very good. And live, a live, a live performance. And let's go to the other, the other Verdi. <laughs> I'll prefer our next recommendation that I was talking about, La Traviata, extremely popular, possibly the most popular uh, Verdi offering. Uh, there we are, and of course there's uh, Maria herself. There we go, and this is on the uh, EMI Classics uh, Alla Scala um, series, where you'll find other blue. CDs again. I, I know for a fact this is on Spotify because it's on my my playlist on Spotify, um, along with a few others um, from the same series. There we go. Absolutely fantastic, classic recording. Again, I think this is live. I think the I don't know the whole Alice Scala is um, live. I could be wrong. Yes, live recording again, 1955. So sort of possibly, you know, the heyday for Callas as far as her voice is concerned. Uh, and of course, who else do we have here? We have, um, it's, well, it's Guilini um, conducting uh, the orchestra of uh, Sc Scala. And uh, we have, oh, well, Callas, Giuseppe Di Stefano. What more do you want? What more would you, would you want? Possibly Tito Gobi, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> um, there we are. So again, I won't go to everybody because we'll be here for a long time. But uh, absolute must recommendation if you're going to have a bit of Verdi, Verdi, sorry, my tiny friends, in uh, in your collection. There we are. If you get the CD, you get the, the booklet with the the synopsis, the libretto, you know, broken down to maps in Italian and English, and I think even German or French. Um, and also the CDs. There we are. There we go. Uh, let's move on now to the next one, which is recommendation, which is Brahms. You have to have a bit of Brahms. Now, again, it's hard to choose. Which Brahms do I choose? The piano concertos, um, or the violin concerto? Oh, again, <laughs> I could go in almost anything else by Brahms, but for me, the violin concerto is. Uh, if I'm choosing a single piece, a single CD, the violin, violin concerto is one of Possibly my favourite piece of Brahms. Possibly, mm, so very close with the piano concertos. But uh, there we are. You can see there we've got EMI again, and there we've got um, Guilini again, just as with the Verdi uh, La Traviata I've just seen with the exact Perlman. Fantastic, and I think this is from from the picture books, like seventies. Is it, is it 1977? I think. There we go, and that's uh, his orchestra. That's. Um, the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Um, again, you could so many recordings. You could choose um, so many for the uh, Brahms Violin Concerto. I really recommend this. But if there are others you could have, but of course I haven't got time to go through <laughs> everything. Possibilities, all possibilities. There we are. Are we here? Now let's move on to Tchaikovsky. Someone who I've really, really over the pandemic. And lockdown really become a, a bit of a Tchaikovsky nut. Um, and here we are. If you're going to have Tchaikovsky, if you're going to have Tchaikovsky, <laughs> you've got to have the ballets. And if you don't want to pay for each ballet in this early stage of your collection, 
this is wonderful this is the collection of ballet suites so um these are sort of the hi musical highlights from each ballet as arranged by Tchaikovsky himself I believe um, and uh, conducted by Rostropovich with the Berliner Philharmonica as far as I presume these are the sort of the, the standard um, you know recordings for these I must have again for your Tchaikovsky uh, ballet and ballet suites as a sort of overview and you have them in chronological order of course so you have uh, Swan Lake um, you have Sleeping Beauty, you have the Nutcracker. Um, wonderful recordings, really fantastic, really real flavour of, of what Tchaikovsky is all about. As with Mozart and his operas and Beethoven and the symphonies. There we go. And uh, I want a little bit more of Tchaikovsky because I couldn't really resist. <laughs> Actually, you know, there's another one as well. Again, I've gone on a bit of a Tchaikovsky um, sojourn over the last two years. Uh, the wonderful violin concerto, absolutely fantastic. Along there with uh, Grit Nutkin, you could choose almost anyone you want from the great violinists. I mean, uh, David Oistrak, of course, probably be one of my other definite picks. Um, but so many great violinists. Um, but for uh, the older recordings, more sort of historic, uh, uh, how can I put it, established recordings um, this is one of the good ones I think um, and it is uh, Gideon Kramer there we go with it's all you're all backwards on my screen so I have to keep doing this <laughs> Lauren Mazel, a young Lauren Mazel, look at that and uh, the Berlin Phil is it yes Berlin Phil um, so you get the violin concerto and I think you get um, the serenade as well serenade melancholic there we are. Can't, can't bring the a great recording of the violin concerto. And we'll finish up with Tchaikovsky. Well, nearly. <laughs> of course, you've got to have a uh, piano concerto. Um, this is again another standard, famous, brilliant, loved recording, respected recording by Marta Agarich. Agarich, I'm not sure how you supposed to say that, pronouncing the name, um, but never quite sure. Claudio Abardo, Berlin Philharmonica, Deutsche Grammophon. Fantastic, I think this is, what is this one? Live recording, live recording, 1994. Wonderful recording. One of my favourite uh, recordings of the uh, Tchaikovsky Concerto. Um, Another piece <laughs> Tchaikovsky wrote for, <laughs> for um, who was it? Rubinstein, of course. <laughs> Specifically for a performer, Rubinstein, who didn't like it when he first played it. And didn't want to, didn't want to give it his first, first performance in what I read. <laughs> Which uh, Tchaikovsky seems to have suffered quite a lot from that sort of thing. And here we're going to finish off with Tchaikovsky's symphonies. Um, I know, I've indulged Tchaikovsky a little bit here. <laughs> but you could probably pick out one or two of any of these recommendations. Symphonies, uh, let's see. It was on here, 4, 5 and 6. Uh, famous Batis heat there. There we go, and of course Van Kepp and Carrion again. With the Berlin Phil, as you would expect, Deutsche Grammophon. This is on the, um, this is uh, the Deutsche Grammophon, I think, I think the series is called the 2 CD series, basically. Um, there's a very good, um, this 2 CD series, there's uh, Karl Richter's, um, uh, 1960s sort of mind's eye recordings of Bach's uh, cantatas, famous cantatas, which is also uh, very, very good, very, very um, uh, cost effective as well. There we go, so I highly recommend those for your collection. And uh, I think that's we're going to end there for part two, and we'll move on to part three uh, in a moment. So look out for part three, and I will see you in a moment. Thanks for watching.